Show with David Letterman. Our next guest is a uh, lead scientist for one of the world's largest conservation organizations, the Nature Conservancy. Please say hello to Dr. M. Sanjin, ladies and gentlemen. Had trouble with your name as well. It's Sanjin. Is that right? That's right. Exactly. And that's what I'll call you. I'll call you Sanjin. And I'll call you Dave. Thank you. <laughs> now, uh, uh, all I want to know is, uh, in the world of um, um, environmental change, uh, uh, cl climate uh, differences, uh, uh, is there anything positive to report? <laughs> well, the, the first thing you should realize is that we are the luckiest generation to be born on planet Earth because we still have time to do something about it. I mean, for millions of years, we walked around this planet basically looking at the horizon, um, and it ends two miles away, and not knowing what's coming around the other side. And then in one generation, our generation, we're up in space, we can see the whole planet. It's like someone handed us a crystal ball. Right. So we're either going to go down as the greatest generation that not just saved civilization, but saved the world, the green generation, or we're going to go down as a bunch of losers <laughs> who knew a lot about what's coming mm -hmm. and didn't do nothing. Mm -hmm. So for me, the choice is pretty simple. I also think that in gen this generation, particularly with climate change, the cost of dealing with it is currently affordable. We wait 20, 30, 50 years, it isn't. It's basically um, the cost of one Starbucks coffee a day per person is what it'll take to mitigate some of the worst impacts of the climate. But uh, having said that, how do we get it going? Um, you How know, come we're not doing it? Yeah, you know, I, th I think there's positive changes. I think the direction is definitely there. You, you know, um, I think that this is an unusual problem. You can't just blame one group or the other. We've all created this problem. Mm -hmm. And so the solution is really in all our hands. And I think it's personal responsibility as well as pushing for things that we really believe in. Um, uh, uh, reducing emissions and protecting forests. I think those are the two biggest things that we can do. And we can get a handle on this. You know, we've faced major catastrophes before. We just didn't know they were coming. This one, we know it's coming. Mm -hmm. It's like buying an insurance policy. You, know, you don't do it because you think your house is really going to burn down. But if it did, right. it makes sense. But isn't it already here and we don't know it? Isn't it, isn't it more here than we thought it was going to be? And well, here's something I heard on the radio the other day. In a couple of years, around the world, the unemployment rate will be 250 million people. 250 million people out of, out of work. And they say that these people, because of the circumstances, will be angry. Now, do you, do, you, do you think that we will be able to get these folks to help save the planet when they're out of work and angry? Well, I, th I mean, I th you know, it, it's about reinventioning what the future of the planet right. is. I mean, some of those changes are already here, and we're going to have to live with it. It's called adaptation. We have to adapt right. to it. But I am not, I mean, look, we might as well go home then. I mean, I am not for one to think that there isn't hope. But that is now. It's going to end. And, you know, how much money can you be buried with? If you have money to spend on the environment, spend it now. Do it now. Mm -hmm. Because um, you're not going to be able to take it with you. So give as much as you can and make a difference. But it, it, it takes uh, mandates uh, from governments. It has to come from uh, governments from uh, big countries, small countries. They have to be in, in, in agreement that, yes, this is a problem. And here, by gosh, is what we're going to do about it. And I think that seems to be almost impossible. Well, look, governments never lead. People lead. Governments follow. I mean, it, so rarely does governments really get in front of something and do it. So I really think it's in our own actions that we do it. Look, I've got uh, a sister and a brother-in-law who, despite my job, show very little general interest in the environment. they got a <laughs> seven-year-old kid. I, it's, it, it, I mean, what am I doing on the show, right? Um, talking to you guys about this. But my seven-year-old niece runs around the house turning off the lights. Mm -hmm. It's reverse engineering. You get to that generation, and you're going to make changes in ours. Yeah. Well, um... It's not so depressing. It, uh, see, I, I can't... <laughs> and we can have fun while we're doing it. Have fun while we're doing yeah. it. What is, what is the Nature Conservancy's uh, role in this? How, how are they uh, helping to protect and reclaim the environment? Well, you know, our job is pretty simple. We, we try to protect land, water, and the air 
for people but also for nature. Um, on the climate side, our biggest thing is we want to stop deforestation because 20% of the carbon that puts out in the atmosphere comes from deforestation. You stop that and you can have a big impact on, on, the, on the future of the climate. Mm -hmm. And the other thing we're known for is really getting things done at scale. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I have the best job in the world being one of the lead scientists running around doing fun stuff. Yeah. Now, uh, let me ask you about the, the ongoing dependence of the United States on, on, on foreign oil. Yeah. Uh, uh, why, why are we so dependent on foreign oil? And, and, and if we're worried about dependence on foreign oil, then, then why hasn't the government created a climate whereby alternative uh, energy uh, transportation has been encouraged and, and underwritten? I think it's the history of change. I think that will happen. Um, you know, we are going to get off our dependence on oil whether we want it or not. It's, it's either going to be forced on us or we're going to do it ourselves. Mm -hmm. I'm always for trying to do those things right. ourselves. Um, but, you know, give, give humanity a little bit of a break. I mean, we are staggered with the enormity of the problem. And it came on us pretty quickly. So I am optimistic that people, much smarter than me, in power, as well as common citizens around the planet, will take action to create the kind of movement necessary for this change. Yeah, uh, it just seems like the problem began, they say, if you need to put a date on it, 1980. That's when we first realized mm -hmm. that there was carbon building up in, in, in the atmosphere. So it seems to me like there should have been a more positive uh, move taken 1990, you know, right around 2000. Yeah. And, and, and now uh, I just, I, I wish I could be more optimistic Absolutely. because it's, it's no longer trying to cure it. It's more about adaptability. Well, look, today is today 20 years from now. What? <laughs> You've got to make a difference somewhere, right? <laughs> You've got to start at some point. Yeah. You're right. I wish I was here in 1980 talking to you mm -hmm. about it. Yeah. But I'm not. I'm here today. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I think that you're right. But I think that if we take action now, in the next five, ten years, we're going to go there. And, and generally, I see the trends heading in the right direction. I, I mean, I do. Maybe I'm, I'm optimistic about it. But, boy, you know, you, you can't, you know, coffins don't sell just because they're on sale. <laughs> and I, I heard now that it's either uh, uh, Denmark or Finland uh, where they're taking a, a, a device and, and pulling, uh, uh, belching the carbon dioxide and, and, and pumping it into the sea bed, into the sea floor, and that there's a possibility that that may happen here off the coast of New Jersey. I mean, sort of reverse engineering. Yeah, actually pumping it, uh, sucking it, rather than releasing it into the atmosphere, yeah. they pump it into the, uh, essentially the core of the earth. Is, is that a possibility? I think Will technology... Technology is definitely going to play a role in it, but I think that technology alone won't solve this. It also has to do with behavior, and it also has to do with adaptation. As you said, mm -hmm. we're going to have to make adjustments, not just for us, but for wildlife as well, in how we live. Mm. All right, well, I don't know. <laughs> if, um, if, if, if everybody uh, uh, stopped uh, uh, burning petroleum and using uh, electricity uh, generated with coal, coal-fired plants tomorrow. Right. No more uh, carbon emissions beginning tomorrow. Everybody on the planet. Right. The atmosphere would continue to heat at a precipitous rate for another 60 years. There's definitely going to be change. And even if we stop right now, you're absolutely right. That change is coming. And that's why you have to do things like protect coastlands, uh, sorry, uh, um, uh, coastlines, and protect water sources and uh, deal with fisheries issues. So you have to adapt to that change. Right. But you, know, you, you don't want the problem getting further, and you don't want to get it beyond certain tipping points, beyond which you can't really have a chance of mm -hmm. bringing it back. We have been living on a changing planet for a long, long time. This change is just going to happen fast. And you hope that three and a half million years of human evolution has got us to the point where we can think fast. Yeah, and if you had to bet on, on the humans solving this problem or bet on humans ignoring this problem, how would you bet? Uh, I, I, I would bet all my money on us solving it, and I'll tell you why, because if, if we don't, there won't be anyone left to collect it. Yeah, that's right. And what are you doing? When, when you're traveling around doing things, what are you doing now? Well, uh, you know, most of the time I'm in big cities talking to audiences, but ever so now and then they let me out of the cage. And I get to go to some great places. I was in the Arctic very recently. Um, polar bears coming at us, uh, really pretty exciting now, stuff. Now, what, what about that? We understand that their habitat is, is yeah. melting. Yeah, so, so you, know, I'm, you know, I'm in a truck, um, you know, late at night, and we've got about 17 polar bears circling this truck. And uh, lo and behold, one comes up to us. Um, you know, we're in a big Chevy 
vehicle. It's a, such an old vehicle that, you know, the key is so loose that, it, you know, it, it sort of falls out of the slot, right. you know what yeah. I mean? And this bear rears up on its hind feet. I promise you, this is absolutely true. It's on, on, on a Discovery show, actually. They were filming this. And it stands up and it pushes the vehicle. Vroom! And we all start screaming, and I'm yelling at the guy who drives the vehicle, you know, a guy named Art. I'm like, Art, Art, get the key. And I can hear the key just go, chink, mm. and it falls on the floor. <laughs> and then he's out there like this. He's just looking for the stuff and all kinds of rubble, you know? And then the bear is doing this on the thing, you know, in a brittle glass, it's just bending. We look like little seal pups under this eyes. It just wants to smash it in. One of us goes out. <laughs> then he finds the key, puts it in, I'm going, let's go, we gotta go, we gotta go. My voice is going higher and higher. And he goes, it's a diesel, it has to warm up. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, that, that, that's, when, that's when the liver starts sweating. Yeah. The liver is sweating, yeah. yeah. That's when the liver is sweating. <laughs> oh, my God. Now, uh, I wish I could be optimistic. I'm just not. Um, and I, and, and, and I, and I, I try. I honestly yeah. think I'm yeah. doing things, but I realize it doesn't make any difference if I come to work naked. If yeah. I if I walk walk to work naked, yeah. uh, so what? You know, I'll be arrested, and that'll be the end of it. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just it, 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 every. What can people do? You know, it's the, the, the low wattage light bulbs, and you know, I don't know. What what can people do? None of it really makes a difference, no, does it? No, no, those little things do make a difference. It's reverse engineering, right? I mean, you see, when you do these little things, right? It, it really does help because it makes you predisposed to doing other things. Mm. So, yeah, don't walk to work naked. Don't, don't do that just yet. But here's, but, here's what I keep saying. Uh, when we were worried about the Russians right. in the 60s, right. uh, John F. Kennedy said, you know what? We're going to the moon. Yeah. To heck with the Russians. You worried about the Russians? Don't worry about the Russians. They're, they're going to be putting uh, monkeys in space. We're going to the moon. And by God, in 10 years, we went to the moon. And, and because people were motivated from fear of the Russians getting ahead of us. And that was why everybody could, could get behind this idea of going to the moon. So now I maintain that the fear of the planet turning into a smoking cinder is, is greater than the Cold War with the Russians, and yet you can't really get folks interested in this. Well, the, the reason is because folks are not, they don't think it's going to happen in their lifetime. So it's, it's you know, they would rather wait till later and then deal with it. So my thing is don't use fear as much as use, look, we can really envision this planet. For once in our life, we have a chance to make a difference and go down as the greatest generation in the history of the planet. I think here's what we need to do. The Russians are right. trying to solve this problem and first. And we need to do it faster. <laughs> We don't want the Russians no. solving this problem. We want to solve this problem. The Iranians are trying to solve it. Sanjin, nice to see you. Great seeing you. Good to have you here, Dr. M. Sanjin. My thanks to Jack Black. Michelle Pfeiffer is here tomorrow. Good night, everybody.